Hey, what's up? Today we are back for a new video about how to build a Swift UI view. So we are going to build this view together. As you can see, it's a circular progress bar. And as you can imagine, by building it, we're going to take a look at how shape work in Swift UI. So let's get started with the first step, which is to put the circular border of the view. So to do it, it's actually going to be quite simple because the circle shape is a built-in primitive of Swift UI. So as you can see, I can just add a circle like this. Now I'm only interested in the border of the circle. So I'm going to apply the modifier stroke border and I'm going to stroke it with a line width of 24 points. And finally, I'm going to add a little padding in order for the view not to directly touch the border of the canvas. Okay, so that was the first and easy step. Then second step, which is still fairly easy, is to add the text in the middle of the circle. So to do it, I'm going to first introduce a Z stack in order to stack elements on top of each other. So I have my Z stack. Inside the Z stack, I'm going to put my circle. And as you can see, the padding, I'm going to apply it to the Z stack directly. So now in my Z stack, just after my circle, I'm going to add a text. And to keep things simple for now, in the text, I'm just going to add some hard coded value. Of course, that's just a placeholder. Then we're going to actually format a numerical data. So I have my placeholder of 25%. I just have to style it. So I'm going to give it a font and it will be a system font of size 64. So it displays as I want. And just as I was saying, now I want to have some state that I can format in my text in order for it to well be updated whenever the state, so the percentage evolves. So I'm going to introduce some state in my view. So I use the property wrapper at state. So I'm going to store a progress. It's going to be a double and I'm going to give it an initial value of 25. And then I'm going to update my text. And in the text, I'm going to format the progress into a string. So here I'm using the init from string, which does a formatting. It's good for this small example. Of course, if you were to do this in a real app, I would suggest using a number formatter. This way you would get something that is more robust and that will also take into account the local preferences of the user. Okay, so that was the easy part we could say because now we have to implement the progress arc, what will show the progress in our circular progress view. So in order to do it, I'm going to introduce a new view because there's going to be some logic in this view and I really want to encapsulate it in its own type. So it's going to be called progress arc. And you can see it's not going to be a view directly. Instead, it's going to be a shape because we're going to use the functions to draw a shape. So when you have a shape, you want to implement the function draw path in rect. And we're also going to store the data that we need in order to display our shape. So here the data is the progress, which is a double. Okay, so let's start implementing our path. So first we're going to need to compute some data in order to draw the circle arc. So first we want to know which is the diameter of the arc. And the way to do it is that we take, so the minimum between the width and the height of the rect in which we're drawing our shape. And then we subtract 24 in order to take into account the width of the circle that we have already drawn onto the screen. Then using the diameter, we compute the radius of the arc. So it's very easy. Just take the diameter and divide it by two. And finally, we need to know also the center of the arc. So once again, quite easy to do. If you do the new kit code, before the days of auto layout, maybe it's going to bring back some memories. For both the horizontal and the vertical direction, you just need to add the origin and the width and divide by two. And this is how you get the coordinate of the center of the rectangle. So now it's time to implement the return value of the method, which is a path. So the way we write a path in SwiftUI is that we're going to use the path type and we're going to have a closure in which we can call some drawing primitives on the path. So you can see things like adding an arc, adding a curve, adding an ellipse, etc. So here we're going to want to add a method called add arc and we're going to take this version which has a few arguments. So there is the center of the arc, there is the radius of the arc, there is the start angle of the arc, the end angle of the arc, and finally an argument to say whether the arc is going to be drawn clockwise or counterclockwise. And actually, given all of the data we have already pre-computed, it's going to be quite easy to fill in the blanks because for the center, well, we already have it, we have computed the center. Same thing for the radius. For the start angle, it's actually quite easy because it's going to be zero. So I build an angle and I give it a degree of zero. For the end angle, so we need to do 
a computation that is going to be quite simple. It's actually going to be, well, 360 degrees multiplied by our progress. And since the progress is between 0 and 1, it does the trick. And the last one, whether or not it's clockwise. And this one, you might be a bit surprised about what I'm going to do, but I need to mark it as false. So it might seem weird because if you remember, the view that we want to build is going to start here and then draw in this direction, which seems to be clockwise. But you need to remember one thing, is that in Swift UI, in the coordinate system, the Y axis is inverted, meaning that it goes downward. So that's why you need to set clockwise to false, because when you put yourself in this coordinate system, drawing like this is actually counterclockwise. And that's it. We have now implemented our progress arc, and we can start using it in our content view. So let me now update the code. So I'm going to create my progress arc. You see, I need to give it a progress as its argument. So I'm giving the progress. And now if I resume my preview, you're going to see something that is a little bit unexpected. You can see that the shape that is being drawn looks super weird, and it even looks like a bug. But it's actually not the case. It's because when we draw a shape, the default behavior is that SwiftUI is going to close the shape and then fill it with black. So we do have our arc here, but then by default, SwiftUI has added this segment to close the shape and then has filled it with black. But just by adding a stroke, we're going to get the behavior that we do want to have. So the way I'm going to do it is that I'm going to add a stroke. So like this, I'm going to give it a color and a line width. So the color I want it to be blue and the line width I want it to be 12, which is half the line width of the circle. And you can see that now indeed our view is appearing just as we want it. The only trouble is that as you can see, the arc is starting here, whereas we would like it to start here. So that's not actually a big problem. I just need to apply a rotation of minus 90 degrees. And that's it. Now we do have our progress bar displaying just as we want. So that's cool. We've achieved our goal. As you've seen, it was rather easy once we knew which method to call, especially using the shape API. But since I think we have still some time left, what we're going to do is that we're going to try to animate also this view because the goal of a progress bar is to be updated a long time in order to reflect the progression of some action that is happening in the background, like for instance, downloading a big file. So what I'm going to do is that on my view, I'm going to add a tap gesture, so on tap gesture. And what I'm going to do in this tap gesture is that I want that when the user taps the view, I want the progress to be updated. So I'm going to hard code something to make the example work. So you can see for every tap, the progress will be updated and it won't go over 100%. And now if I make my preview be interactive, you can see that when I click on the view, indeed the percentage is incremented, but there is no animation on my shape. And that's kind of a shame because it's not really agreeable for the user to see a view update like this without an animation. So in order to make our view animatable, we're going to have to implement the animation. And you're going to see that it's actually quite easy because basically in order to animate a view from one state to another, SwiftUI needs a way to compute and to draw all the intermediary states. And we just need to give SwiftUI the information in order to do this. So what we need to do is that we need to implement a property which is animatable data. And what it does is that it's going to tell to SwiftUI, this is the property that we need to update in order to draw all the intermediary state. And so the way that we do it is that we implement a getter and a setter for the property. And actually, as you can see, it's just a proxy for the getters and the setters to my progress because the progress is the one property that you need to update in order to animate the state of the progress arc view. And now that this is implemented, I just need to add a modifier in order to say that I do want to animate my view. So I'm going to add a linear animation. And now, well, if I resume my preview and I interact again with my view, as you can see now, everything is animated. And of course, it looks much better when you have this view displayed in your app. And that's it. We are done. As I've said, we have now implemented this circular progress view. So as you've seen, it was not that complicated at all. Actually, the big difficulty when you want to implement such a view that uses shapes is to know which method to call on your path. And once you know this, everything else is pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of calculating the coordinates for some specific points. And then you just call the method. And that's 
that's it, it's done. So if you want to experiment with this view, as always in the description, you have a link to get the source code of everything I have implemented in this video. If you have any feedback, please let me know in the comments. I know that when you do Swift UI, there are a lot of different ways to implement a view. So if you have maybe an alternative that might be better, please let me know, send me a link to a gist on GitHub. And as always, thank you for watching this video and see you next time.